So that, remember we talked a lot about the bond? No, no, no. The way you get that bond is to just whack it at the wall and then push it with the heel of your hand up. So you want to slip and kill the spring. Now, Mark, does it, we don't want to go, um, we're not going to build up a really huge coat in here. He doesn't feel like it needs, you know, like a two inch coat. And we talked about possibly leaving, we'll have to see if we really want to do one thick base and then just plan it just to finish. And you have to make that decision at this point because you need to know whether you're going to scratch it or float it or sponge it. You know, what, what's the surface going to be left like? Is it going to be, have a lot of tooth for the next thick, thick coat or not? How long will this take to dry? It depends on the conditions. <laughs> Yeah. What do you expect, Mark? What do you expect? Uh, yeah, car, she's anyway. exactly right. It's depending on the conditions. If there was, if it was summertime and there's a breeze blowing through, overnight. Right. If it gets 20 degrees tonight and snows, it a won't week. fail. No. No, it won't freeze. I don't think. I, I think we're protected enough, even with oh, this, yeah. just this. Let it go. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little patch, and then I'm gonna show you what I do with. Can I, is there a bucket of water I can have? Yeah. Mm. So if you prepare it the wrong way, could you go back, wet it, and re? Yeah, you could. You could. So we'll see. So, so different tools will leave different surfaces. Um, this is a wood float that'll leave a little bit rougher surface, and it, it'll leave some open pores, and it'll sort of peel the sand up just a little bit. Um, a steel trowel will push the sand down, it's like finishing a concrete slab, you have to push the sand down and bring the clay or the fines to the surface and put, give more of a seal to the finish. So this is more of a finished, finishing trowel um, than this would be. Dude, it's humid in here. Mm. Yes. 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 Your first keeping your tools wet is always nice because then it, they slide over and, um, and stuff and keeping them clean so you're not getting lots of clay build up. And then I would plant the bottom edge of this and work it up and across. And the idea is to, is to hit the high spots and bring them into the low spots. And doing lots of different directions gets you to make sure that you're kind of putting it uh, where it needs to go. So that's about the surface that we need to leave it at this point if you decide I guess you want to bring this out though. I'm, yeah, I'm going to bring that out. If we, if we were to get Three quarters of an inch wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, so if you plan on putting another kind of heavier coat, then you're going to use something like one of these to leave the tooth, the heavy mechanical bond. This is a typical concrete tool, and normally, you know, you do something like this, and that, as that dries, it's going to be the grab for the next coat. Now, with a with a heavy straw plaster, or um, if I'm doing a, a earth plaster that's going to have a lime finish on it, and remember I talked about how, mm -hmm. how bomber that mechanical bond needs to be, then a tool like this really gets in, really gets in and you know that the next coat is going to fill that in and really grab mm -hmm. and sort of you know, be um, part mm -hmm. of the next yeah. coat. So I would, um, I actually like this kind of tool also with the heavy straw because the idea of having the straw going all different directions mm -hmm. means you have tensile strength in all those directions. If you rake it deeply and you sort of align all that, it's not quite as good. And you can see that mm. it kind of gets these little peely um, mm -hmm. edges. This is a little bit, it, it keeps the coat a little bit um, tighter um, and doesn't let it by. Okay, let me show you this too if I... You know, really, if you wanted to, in a doghouse or, you know, you could just put one thick coat, steel trowel it, and be done, or lime wash that and be done. Mm -hmm. So you'd steel trowel it, you'd seal that finish and stuff, but see how it keeps the coat sort of together mm -hmm. instead of peeling up all those little pieces? That's a nice texture in itself. Yep. <laughs> Although I wouldn't want water 
Yeah. Right. right. You know? For the inside. Yeah. Right. So anyway, so I think, um, Mark, because we're not going to put uh, stuff on here, do you want us to try to build past and hang it up so you can meet it with another thick coat? Since you've put a, this is a J strip that he's put down, and this sort of is the guide for the thickness. Do you want us to leave it a rough surface? Um, so you can yeah, add... modestly rough would be fine. Okay, so why don't we, yeah. we'll, we'll use something like this. It won't bring it out too okay. much, and you'll have some tooth. Yeah, you. I think, there. you know, there's two different schools of thought for finishing. Some folks really like the undulating walls, and, mm -hmm. and I like that, and it's organic and all that. And then there's others that like the straight and... I'm kind of one of those straightened. Straighten yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the, I like some inconsistency so you know it's not off the rack. Right. But, so there's, there's two cents for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if it's, a, you know, that's why we're in the garage, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and just a quick it's okay, whatever you do is just fine in the garage. But a quick lesson with, um, with a hawk and trowel, this is pretty heavy stuff to be using. Um, it's nice to actually do it on my hand, but if you put some on a hawk and trowel, I usually sort of cut it up, and then I will pick it up this way. So I'm, almost, I'm tilting my hawk almost sideways, plant that bottom edge, and then working it up and in. Your hands look good. So this stuff is so heavy. It's, um, this is a more of a finished trowel and it's real soft. It doesn't see this piece here. Doesn't Some of these it. trowels will extend it all the way to here. It'll be real stiff. Um, so actually switching to something that is stiff. Mm -hmm. Allow me to work it. And then this stuff is so um, kind of thick and stuff that I take two hands if I'm going to try to work out some lumps in it and stuff. And you work it like that as you're going up the wall, not like all the way to the wall and then come back and do that. Oh, I think you're yep. right. Yeah, yep. you can do that. I mean, you can do, you know, there, I've seen crews just work by hand, never touch a tool, and do gorgeous, gorgeous work and stuff. And so I'd really like you guys to work as much just by hand as possible to get it started and just, because that's where you learn. You can always transfer that to using tools, but if, if you skip that learning with your hands, you're really missing out. So. So when we do it with our hands, are we are we going to be smoothing it out, or we're we still going to use the trowel afterwards? Yeah. So like that. Like this, and then you know, use your hand like a trowel. Right. You know, back and forth until you get it as flat as as you can, and filled in, fill in all the low spots. Um, but it can be pretty darn quick. You just kind of work it back and forth, um, and then you know, we get a big section done. We'll come back and and work it with the wooden floats. Where there's a bunch of wooden floats around.